Hi everyone, Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And for today's video, we are honoring one story out of the many stories from the USS Indianapolis, uh, which sank today, 30 July 1945. So it's the 70th anniversary of the sinking of that ship. My first foray into the USS Indianapolis was a long time ago in the movie Jaws. You had the guys, uh, you know, Roy Scheider and Richard Dreyfus and Quint, I can't remember his real name, but they're all comparing scars and things like that, and then all of a sudden Quint says that he was on the USS Indianapolis, and he tells the story very compellingly. So if you're familiar with that, check that out too, it's, it's, it's a nice foray into the USS Indianapolis. Uh, USS Indianapolis herself was CA-35, a Portland-class heavy cruiser constructed in the 30s, and they all saw pretty extensive service uh, during World War II. Uh, but we are going to be focusing on this gentleman right here, place of honor here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and in Waterbury, Connecticut, where he's from, and I will give you the story of Father Thomas Conway. So the sinking is hit by a tor two torpedoes from a Japanese submarine, sliced off the bow. One of the torpedoes did or did ex very extensive damage on the bow. The other hit midship. Went down in about 12 minutes. 300 guys uh, were immediately lost uh, with the sinking of the vessel. But that means about 900 guys were in the water, and they were in the water for six to seven days. One of those was Father Thomas Conway, who was the chaplain of the ship. And over the course of those five or six days before rescue, another 600 or so had perished. So by the time that there was actually the rescuing of the sailors of the USS Indianapolis, uh, there was only about 320, 317 uh, that were officially rescued. Uh, Father Thomas Conway, what's his tie to Buffalo, being from Waterbury, Connecticut? Well, he was born in Waterbury, Connecticut in 1908. He then came to Niagara University, which is, as you can imagine, near Niagara Falls, to study for the priesthood. And uh, he was ordained a priest, and he was assigned to the Diocese of Buffalo. And for eight years, he was uh, a parish priest here at a couple of places. Um, St. Rose of Lima, St. Teresa's, St. Bridget's. Uh, and then he uh, enlisted in the Navy as a chaplain in 1942. Uh, of all of the survivors, the one story is Father Thomas Conway would go swimming from man to man, offering last rites, offering absolution, and even baptizing those that wanted to be baptized before they perished. The Navy Cross was posthumously awarded for Father Thomas Conway because he perished three and a half days after the ship went down. So the ship sank again on the 30th of July. Father Thomas Conway slip beneath the surface of the water, never to return on the 3rd of August. They, and the rest of the survivors were spotted on the 5th and then rescued over the course of August 5th and August 6th. Uh, so that is why we like to honor him because not only did he administer last rites to those that were dying in the water as well, but then he eventually succumbed uh, to the water after three and a half days. And so that is a very compelling story, is that he was the one swimming around uh, the ocean, talking and comforting these men. Now we've seen, in, if you've watched our video about the USS Frank Franklin, uh, that chaplain also uh, really gave of himself, and he was awarded the Medal of Honor uh, for his work during that time on the USS Franklin. Uh, Father Thomas Conway's story is a little different. Now I have a list of his awards that he was uh, given posthumously, and it's pretty extensive. So I've got my notes here. He was awarded the Gold Star Family Medal, which I was not very familiar with. The Purple Heart, American Theater Campaign Medal, 
Asiatic Pacific Medal with three battle stars, the World War II Victory Medal, uh, the Navy Combat Action Ribbon, and the Navy Distinguished Unit Medal as well. It wasn't until 2021, after a long push, that he was awarded the second highest honor, the Navy Cross, and well deserved. One of the things about a, a Navy Cross of, of an award that prestigious and distinguished is it has to be endorsed by someone who was ranked higher than you. Most of the officers perished in the sinking itself. And if you know the story of Captain McVeigh, he was court-martialed for his actions during that sinking. And then later in life, it was expunged from his record. Uh, and eventually he ended up committing suicide in 1968 uh, over losing his wife about six, seven years earlier. And he was really pilloried by the families of some of the crew on the Indi uh, USS Indianapolis. And so he carried all that weight with him. So if they were looking to get the Navy Cross for Thomas, Father Thomas Conway, there weren't any officers above his rank of lieutenant to endorse it. But eventually the Navy uh, bent those rules a little bit, and in 2021 he was uh, duly and he was duly awarded uh, the Navy Cross for his actions. Uh, this is what we have in honor of him. You can see he's holding uh, dog tags from those sailors that he was giving administering last rites to. And we also show in the video the monument in Waterbury, Connecticut uh, to him outside of a parish in Waterbury, Connecticut. We do have uh, Father Thomas Conway Park here in Buffalo as well. It's in uh, South Buffalo uh, where St. Bridget, St. Teresa's was. Uh, so that's a park in honor of him as well. And not only the sinking of the Indianapolis and those guys lost over the succeeding six days, but certainly we like to hi uh, highlight Father Thomas Conway and his selflessness during that time in uh, the water for rescue. Please leave a comment if you like this video. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that fun stuff. We can't thank you enough for your support. We're really rolling through the season now, so hopefully you guys can make it up here and visit. And uh, thanks so much, and we'll see you again soon.